Today we take the opportunity to honor 26 exceptional professional engineers or engineers in training employed by our federal government. Engineering is an important and learned profession. As professional engineers, we are expected to exhibit the highest standards of honesty and integrity. We have a direct and vital impact on the quality of life for all people. Therefore, we must be dedicated to the protection of the public health, safety, and welfare with fairness and equity. To start off today's celebration, we are honored to have with us Major General Timothy S. Green, PE, U.S. Air Force Director of Civil Engineers here as our opening speaker. So first I want to ask, uh, it's a mixed crowd here, who grew up with John Wayne movies? Anybody? So, so John Wayne, so for the younger crowd, right, because not every hand went up, I know it's hard for me to believe that. Uh, John Wayne was, was one of my heroes, you know, and, and when I grew up, he was always trying to do the right thing. He would take on the bad guys, even at great risk to himself. And so he was typically serving others, and mostly he came out alive at the end, right? And so that's always a good, that's always a good thing. Uh, and so when we think about the future, you know, one of the things I ask, and I ask my kids as they were growing up, you know, who are your heroes, right? Who are the heroes of today? And then what are we doing to help shape people to have heroes that we would believe in, that we think are good uh, to do that? But I didn't grow up knowing I wanted to be an engineer. No one in my family had done that. Uh, it was just kind of a default thing, and I went, and I said, okay, I'll go do this, and it sounds like fun. What I didn't realize is I grew up, I love playing games, I love working puzzles, I love solving problems, uh, and I love thinking about things. And so really, I did grow up wanting to be an engineer, I just didn't know it. So off to school, I went to Texas A&M, uh, was signed up to be a mechanical engineer, because that sounded like a lot of fun, because I hadn't been thinking about it, and it was, except, my very first professor in, in ME 101, uh, he could have cared less about us, right? And so as a result of that, I was in the, in the fight in Texas Aggie Band there, and we had an academic advisor. Who, one of them was a civil engineer named Dr. Wayne Dunlap. Dr. Dunlap cared about me and everybody else. And so I changed my major because I really hadn't been invested in engineering just because I wanted to be like Dr. Dunlap. Right? I wanted to be the kind of man that he was and exemplified. And so I made my career choice based upon wanting to be like somebody else. What I would ask you is, who's looking at you? And what kind of choices are they making about you? Why the Air Force? Right? Pretty accidental. When I applied late to Texas A&M because what I want to be, right? I was looking for music scholarships and doing some other things. Uh, so I applied late, I got in late, I didn't have a place to live, and I didn't have a lot of money. So to do that, you can join the core at A&M, you get a dorm room. I liked music, so I joined the band, I still got a dorm room, uh, being in the band, and that's where I met Dr. Dunlap. After two years of being in ROTC, which was a requirement, you're not required to do that your junior and senior year, the Air Force offered me money. They said, we'll give you a scholarship. Uh, that sounded awesome. Right, I got paid for books. You might remember how much the engineering books used to cost? Right? Man, that was a lot. I got a monthly stipend. And, and then that's kind of where the John Wayne story comes in, right? So I got money that I needed to go to school, and I also had grown up with this idea of service uh, and this idea of helping others. And so those two married together very nicely. And so I joined the Air Force for four years because that was what I was going to do is, is serve my country uh, for that and then go off in the civilian world. Uh, instead, I fell in love. I had no idea I was going to fall in love with the military. I got to serve with outstanding men and women and their families and get to know them uh, and, and be alongside them. And so that's why I chose to stay was because of who I was serving with and what we were doing. It's also the moment in time that I decided I needed to be a professional engineer. I knew it. Because what happened when I wasn't a professional? When the people did not looking around me did not see me as a professional because I was young and I didn't have a PE, I did have an EIT. Uh, they looked at me different and I was not being able to effectively manage the conversation and lead just based upon the things I knew. Uh, so I resolved then that I was going to become a PE uh, and that's what I did and, and I would encourage you all to do that because I wanted to be seen as a professional and I wanted to contribute to my profession. Uh, and I think the other thing that becoming a PE does for, did for me and I would submit that it would do for all of us uh, is when I was in other jobs, I'd keep my license on the wall. So when I was a young captain and running a design section, every architect, engineer that came in to see me commented about my registration. 
and they treated me differently because they knew that I was a professional. So I just think that you all, uh, I think we, we all need to promote this idea of professionalism in our community and our career field because the federal government does not always require it of all of us, right? It's not required in the Air Force, it's not required in the Army. Um, and so there's some portions of the government that rely on us as engineers, but sometimes people on the outside don't view us that way unless we demonstrate this commitment. And I'll, and I'll close by reminding you all of, of just what Cody said earlier. We have a tremendous responsibility to this nation. You know, all of us are serving in the federal sector. We've all made a choice to do that here. Uh, and our nation needs us. Our nation needs you. We have a responsibility to, to grow the next generation of engineers in STEM and in the schools and getting out there and being a part of it. Uh, so while this is, a, this is a wonderful gathering of leaders in our federal community, right, your challenge is the leaders. So all of you award winners uh, and others, my challenge to you is to go out and continue to make a difference beyond just your job, right, but into the community. Get, get engineers in the pipeline. Get us going. We are short of engineers in this nation, and it's a national, in my opinion, a national crisis. Good afternoon, everyone. This, it's a great pleasure for me to be here today. Uh, this is one of my favorite duties as executive director of NSPE. It's also one of the most intimidating as probably one of the few, if not the only, liberal, ar liberal arts majors in the room. Um, <laughs> But over the last uh, 38 years, the FAYA program has honored thousands of accomplished professional engineers, including the new class we introduce uh, today. Our stellar roster of 2017 Agency Engineers of the Year are highlighted in the program, and you've seen their names and uh, photographs scrolling on the, uh, on the screen during our lunch. And all of you, all of you have done amazing things. So it's my pleasure to congratulate all of you on behalf of NSPE and professional engineers in government. We are proud of you and your accomplishments as engineers and as citizens. Uh, now we reach the 10 engineers nominated from among the agency winners who were chosen by our judging panel as NSPE's top 10 federal engineers of the year. It gives me great pleasure to announce this year's 2017 Federal Engineer of the Year. Will you please join me on stage, Jennifer Bounty, PE. U.S. Department of Interior Bureau of Reclamation. <laughs> For your outstanding engineering achievements and contributions to the engineering profession and to humankind, I am privileged to present you with the 2017 Federal Engineer of the Year Founders Medallion. Thank you very much. It is an incredible honor. I'm, I'm quite shocked and humbled among all of these amazing engineers, and it's not often that as an engineer we're celebrated. Um, so this is, this is such a neat opportunity. Usually when we're among friends or family, that's kind of that, yeah, what, what, what do you do? And, you know, I usually, being from Bureau of Reclamation, say, Hoover Dam, have you heard of it? Yeah, <laughs> that's us. So um, the Elwha project was really unique. Um, it was an ama amazing experience because it was the world's tallest dams that have been removed. Um, for fish passage restoration. It was a collaboration among many uh, federal agencies and a tribe and many community members. And to see the love of the people who work there and the engineers um, was truly amazing. Uh, I've never seen such a team of people who just wanted to see a project be successful um, from start to finish. And it, like a good federal project, took a few decades <laughs> to get through. Um, and it was just an amazing opportunity. And as an engineer, I grew um, so much learning uh, how to do engineering real time during uh, lots of problem solving and constructions and some tough times, but some wonderful times. And uh, yeah, thank you.